Individuals are important components of populations and ecosystems. Yet so far, we used models that focused on biomass only, as this is the typical way forward in ecosystem models. We have now mostly assumed that individual variation did not matter. This implies that all the state variables considered were species, populations, mixtures of species, plankton or algae for instance, or functional groups, predators, herbivores. As these state variables were typically represented by chemical elements only, carbon and nitrogen units were always expressed in function of their concentrations, so gram per square meter, mole per cube meter, and the fluxes were then expressed in these concentrations per unit of time, day for instance. These models thus all assume that if individuals differ in size, their size distribution did not change in time. Biomass-based models are thus especially suitable for modeling processes in small organisms that show a continuous reproduction and present stable mixes of sizes. Alternatively, we use such models when demographic processes in larger species were deliberately excluded at a temporal scale of interest. From the moment we need to consider such a demographic heterogeneity, with single cohorts reproducing or when rates or size related and size variations considerable variable over the model time span, different methods need to be used. For instance, when modeling processes in larger organisms or when certain size classes need to be harvested. Metabolic rate, for instance, is well known to be linearly related to size on a log-log scale. Metabolic rate decreases relatively with increasing size, making carbon losses through respiration more important for a certain biomass of smaller than larger organisms. Size additionally matters when demographic processes differ substantially among different size or age classes. Saplings have, for instance, a larger mortality than mature trees. Also, when feedbacks between the environment are present, size can be very important. Erosion by wind, for instance, is larger around larger species than small ones. Conversely, larger grass tussocks, or for instance madam grass, trap more sand than the smaller ones and therefore contribute more to dune formation than the smaller ones. Finally, when economics are considered, size is very important for yield, as breeders, foresters, fishers usually prefer to harvest larger individuals from their stocks. The first solution to include individuals in our models is by jointly modeling the weight of an average individual in the population and its density. Total biomass is then the net product of these two state variables. This thus implies that we need to model two mass balances. Weight is directly determined by growth, respiration and defecation processes, whereas density is being purely determined by demographic parameters such as mortality and birth. Weight is thus expressed in gram or mole per individual, density always as individuals per surface or volume and the biomass eventually as a concentration based on the product of both weight and density. An alternative way to proceed consists of modeling fluxes and other processes for each individual, and then summing all individuals to get population or ecosystem-based outputs. As individuals are modeled explicitly in this way, individual heterogeneity is by definition considered, rendering models more realistic. On the other hand, they need to be heavily parameterized and rely on intensive computational methods. We refer to these models as agent-based or individual-based models. For instance, the life cycle of species can be separated among juvenile and adult stages, each with their own physiology and demography in relation to interactions with the environment or each other. The algorithms behind the individual-based models are typically formalized as flowcharts of the actions. They are based on logical programming, but wherever possible with a sound mathematical background. Here you see such a flowchart for studying food web dynamics in a quite complex community of fish. Besides size dependency of processes, also chemical composition might matter. For instance, activity can depend on the amount of structural mass from proteins. Behaviors and demography are dependent on fat reserves or any other stoichiometry, and all these may equally determine the quality of organisms for harvesting. 
Important here is just to consider that different vital functions rely on different chemical architectures. Structural mass is the basis for organismal functioning. Reserve organs store carbon and nitrogen, while energy can be allocated to reproductive organs depending on the time and environment. Rates will therefore always be dependent on the volume or surface of the structural mass. Such physiology-based models include the assimilation of carbon by ingestion and the catabolism by which these energy stocks fuel reproduction and the further accumulation of structural mass during growth. Carbon gets lost by respiration and all processes are known to be temperature dependent. These physiology-based models are key to dynamic energy budget models, so-called DAP models. DAP models of an individual, usually an animal, describe the rate at which the organism assimilates and utilizes energy for maintenance, growth and reproduction as a function of the state of the organism and of its environment. The theory thus presents simple mechanistic rules that describe the uptake and use of energy and nutrients, substrates, food, light, and the consequences for physiological organization throughout an organism's life cycle, including the relationship of energetics with aging and the effects of toxicants. In plants, structural mass depends also on the uptake of other elements besides carbon, as there are nitrogen, phosphate and potassium, with growth eventually limited by one of these. The presented algae growth model is for instance based on carbon and nitrogen uptake. Finally, we may need to separate processes and different organs to get a complete individual picture. This is especially so for plants, where activity depends on the amount of different structural organs, or for which economic purposes should consider maximization of growth of certain organs only, roots, leaves, flowers or fruits. These organs do have different functions. Flowers are essential for seed set and reproduction, leaves for photosynthesis, rhizomes for storage and release of carbon reserves, and roots for nutrient uptake. Importantly, all these compartments are connected to each other, so fluxes between the organs will eventually determine the entire plant growth and functioning. These fluxes will additionally be impacted by external forcing factors like light and water availability. Now, time for practicing again with R.